Hello everybody and welcome to a completely different video. Now, disclaimer, if you are poor, do not watch this video because you are going to feel horrendous. I have spent over a mil preparing on this video and some of the stuff I'm about to use is criminally insane to actually use. So, this video is going to be all about some of the old items that have become discontinued in the Elder Scrolls Online. To put this in comparison of just how expensive and rare some of these items are, I'm going to be using an item that I've only ever seen about five of. I'm going to be using an item that I've only ever seen three of. An item that I've probably seen about 20 of, etc. And I've got links for items that almost never appear in the game at all. If ever, and they probably never will. So, some of these are going to be tradable. Some of these are not going to be tradable. It should be a really interesting video. None of this stuff is possible to get anymore. This is all discontinued items. There's a lot of history to this stuff. But more importantly... I'm going to do a bit more than history. I'm actually going to show you guys exactly what this stuff does. So, I'm going to start off with some easy stuff. Now, if you're interested in the really fascinating stuff, you're going to have to hang around to the end because these links I can't get again. So, for those who don't know, many sets in this game have become discontinued or released by accident over the period of the game. And I've got a few of those to show to start with. Let's take this one here, Shield of the Unassailable, which, lo and behold, doesn't bloody work as a link. Nice. Good start, Tom. I'll tell you what I could do. I could just hit enter. There we go. That'll work. So, Shield of the Unassailable is this. This was renamed to June Ripper. This set no longer exists in the game. Um, it used to be dropped... I don't even remember. I think it was from a trial. But basically, it got changed to June Ripper. That's nothing that exciting, obviously. Let's move up the excitement scale to the Giant's Spider Helm. Now, some of you may have heard about this one. For whatever reason, Xenomax released this about three months ago in-game. And it only came once, and it was supposed to be removed. Of course, it wasn't removed. This is supposed to be the Swarm Mother Helm, but for whatever reason, it was released in a different version. And this is the Giant Spider Helm. Now, for those interested why that is so interesting, this has a 4% healing buff on the One Piece item. If I search Swarm Mother, you have a 124 stamina recovery buff. However... The two-piece is the same. So, basically, this is a version of the item that's not meant to exist. We move up the excitement scale a little further now. Let's scroll through these items that I've linked. And we move on to the Covenant Bow. So, the Covenant Bow is an item that used to be able to got from PvP reward mails. And it used to be able to got from general sort of farmy type stuff in Cyrodiil. Now, what's really interesting about this is the enchantment. Just take a moment to take that in. 1,222 Oblivion enchant. For those interesting why that's interesting, that is not the normal enchant for a CP 140 weapon. That is significantly more than what you're meant to get on the bow. And this is what made the item so interesting. Now, I believe the Eagle Eye still exists in the game as a different set now, but the Covenant Bow, etc., they no longer exist. Now we're going to move on to one of the most expensive most exciting items in the game full stop because this has the coolest style in the game. This is True Flame. So True Flame was a three piece set with 129 weapon damage. This barely existed in the game at all. So how you got this item was this item was released apparently as far as I know as an extremely rare reward only in the first week of the game from fishing. I don't know 100% if that's true but what this item actually does is it looks brilliant. Look at the style of that item. I hope that one day that will get released in the game properly. And also look at that enchant. 7,551 flame damage. That's absurd. As a one piece, that enchant is gigantic. So that's another really good one. We're now going to paste our second line. And coming in with True Fire, you also have Hope's Fire, which is much the same but a one-handed weapon. Less exciting. This is only level one, of course, this link. Um, but again, exactly the same way of getting this as True Flame. Except this one had the flame damage as a dagger. So this, or oh, actually it's a sword. It is a sword. It looks like a dagger. I didn't even realize that before. So this is your other option. Um, much the same as True Flame, except this was got in a completely different way. And again, the enchant is completely out of whack. 318 on a level one item is very, very high. Now we have a couple of items that don't exist at all. So this is the Levens Master's Ring. And it's also got another piece, which is this piece here, the Ebon Sledge, which is a melee version of this. So this is the Treasures of the Earthforge set and Destruction Suite set. These sets gave a free piece item set bonus with 2,802 spell damage. 
pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore. And these are the only ones that I've ever found a link for. So this was linked to me by one of my viewers. Good job, that man. Strogomius, I think these were. Actually, these weren't. No, these were Mia. Strogomius was the unassailable shield. I've got to shout everyone out. But these, again, are really, really awesome. They don't exist in game anymore. And another set along those was Shield of the Mambles. This is from the Rebellion set, which would give health. And when you deal damage, you have a 5% chance to gain a damage shield that absorbs. Obviously, a set bonus sucks. But again, they don't exist in the game anymore, which is what makes them cool. That's the boring stuff, so to say. So now I've got some items that I'm actually able to use. And these items are more interesting. So we're going to start this off, first of all, from our miscellaneous inventory, just to show you some of the stuff available. And then we're also going to go into our provisioning tab, where I believe he says, hopefully, I might have to get a confirmation here as to where this actually is. Where on earth does this item fall? That's the question. Maybe it's consumable, actually. I'm going to have to ask Malambus. Malambus, where on earth does that ingredients go? Here we go. It goes into materials. So this is an old corn mash. Now, many of you guys won't know how these actually work. So back in the day, you used to be able to get provisioning ingredients from different names. And you'd have hundreds of types of these. The big ones were tomatoes, which held a really big price at the time. It was like 1 to 2k. Pretty rare. Um, you could only really get them from Harlings. And there was one other as well. I can't remember which. Eventually, those were replaced by the current materials that you see today and these ones were turned into old material name they removed all use of these and all you can now do is basically sell them to a vendor or some people collect them i've just been given a link for more things so let's have a look at this amulet of conflagration is from the arms of infernant set gives weapon damage on a free piece tenth ring of trinamac thousand four hundred spell uh, physical resistance not the most exciting buff there and Ring of the Embers, again, Destruction Suite. This is some more items that the same guy linked me before. So that's from Micaiah de Pristiran. So pretty cool ones there. Right, moving on a bit. We then have the Bloody Claw, Dark Aether, Mark of the Legion, Monstrous Tooth, and Planar Armor Scraps. Now, these items were basically released in the game as trophies and this was how i see imperial city was originally released so you'd go into the ic and certain mobs would give you certain trophies so the big hot ones were bloody claw and dark ether monstrous tooth they were your hot favorites i think i'm missing one actually i can't remember which i'm missing i don't know i am missing one i can't remember which but basically the big ones for you were going to be dark ether and bloody claw for getting hold of your willpower and then Monstrous Tooth was glorious for agility along with one other one, I think. I can't remember the name of that one, but I'm sure I could find it in game if I wanted. Mark of the Legion and Planar Scraps. These were going to be for endurance, etc. These obviously have since been replaced by Trophy Vault Keys, which are going to be called, cool. he says, quickly going into the guild. Key Fragments. So that is the current version of these. These old versions no longer exist, but are very common in the guild stores themselves. Along with those, you also have the old Soul Gems. Again, these no longer exist. These were for low-level gear. As far as I'm aware, you can only use Soul Gems now. They're just called Soul Gem. These used to be called Grand Soul Gems. Now they are just called Soul Gems, and they work on all levels. And you no longer have access to these older ones, but there are obviously still some in the game. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've missed before we go on the exciting ones. So, let's cover the exciting ones quickly. Now, the exciting ones I've got for you today are as follows we've got axe now this is a discontinued item that is wieldable and usable but has no physical appearance and there's a few items like this you can get armors and you can get weapons i haven't got hold of any of the armors for this videos i do have a friend who has them he just didn't come on today otherwise i would have got those as well but just to show you how this actually works i'm going to go out the door and get myself in a bit of space so what this will do is you'll be able to wield it it's not bound and you can pop it on like so It'll still load up as a question mark, but when you swap onto that bar, you are wielding an axe. Except you aren't. This is my axe right now, as you can see. It's completely invisible. And there's a number of these in the game. So how these were got, were these were original loots from Cyrodiil Rewards. And after a very short period of time, they were removed and replaced by systems similar to the current system today. And that's how you're going to get those. That is far less exciting than the remaining ones we have. So the remaining ones are the hot five. We are going to be using a Covenant Brigand Mercenary Contract, a Covenant Mage Mercenary Contract, two discontinued runes, that is JD and Liar. And we're also going to be using a discontinued 
camp. Now, what I am wondering is that. Wait. I think that might be the original sword. No way. I think that's genuinely the original sword. Ah, this is the last one. Daedric Embers. That was the last one used from the old trophy vaults, by the way. I think. Oh, no, that was the one from the dungeons. That's not. Never mind them. Um, I just got another link here as well. Grievous Ward. So this is another one of the old sets. Ah, this was the Endurance, but that was a name drop. Okay. I think that covers the easy stuff. So... What I'm going to do now is, before we go on to the ones on this character, I'm going to relog and explain one of our rare items. So Tommy Psycho, if you could log on your AD and jump into Shore, that would be perfect. So what we're going to be showing you now is the old discontinued camp. Now this camp does not exist in the game anymore. So the old forward camps, how these would work pre-1.5 is you would place a forward camp and you'll be able to respawn at that camp from any location whatsoever on the map. What that means is that you could basically do what was called as bloodletting. So you'd place a camp at the far end of the map. Let's imagine I'm DC, top left, and AD is at the bottom and EP is at the bottom right. If I wanted to attack AD as a DC, I would fight in my area. But I would send one guy all the way down the map and he would place his camp. We could then, as a group, suicide at any random keep. I think I've crashed. Of course I do that in this video. Whatever, who cares? We could then suicide at that keep. And that would allow us to respawn all the way at the bottom of the map. It just so happens that I have access to one of these old camps. Now, disclaimer, I have not been able to test this. There are not many of these in the game at all. I'm going to test it right now on stream. I do not know whether bloodletting will still work. We're about to find out, essentially. So I might be able to respawn at this. Now, these eventually got removed from the game full stop, where there was a period of about two or three months without any camps whatsoever in the game. When those were removed from the game, there were obviously the intelligent guys, most of the big girls, myself, any of the old PvPers. We spent all of our AP, every last drop of it, on getting camps. And those camps were held in guild banks and banks where they still will be today. They're not tradable, and you can't even put them in a guild bank anymore because people were sharing them through there. But they do still work as camps. Now, for the period of time before camps were released, you could certainly use this for bloodletting and normal camps. And that was a really, really powerful buff. We're about to find out in a sec, if I can invite Tommy Psycho, whether these actually still work. So let's have a look, see here. Hopefully Tommy's online. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get him to place one of the old style camps. Very nice. He's here. And we're going to try and see if we can spawn there. So I'm going to go to Ash. In fact, better still, I'm just going to ride all the way over to Glamis. So, Tommy, if you're able to, when I suicide, can you place your, cla uh, your camp in Ash? And I'm going to go all the way up to Glamis and see if I can spawn. Again, guys, I have no idea if this is actually going to work. I don't think anybody has used any of these old style camps for years. It's probably over two years now since that stuff was removed. This will be pretty much a first glance as to whether this even works anymore after a very long time. Now, whilst I'm writing, one of my chat reminded me the other name of the old trophy gems. The one you saw there, the Daedric Fragments. They were used basically for sets like Spell Pycure, etc. from White Gold and Imperial City. Uh, the one I'm missing here is Bone Shard. Bone Shard would be the other trophy that I do not have access to. And basically how Bone Shard would work is you'd be able to use your Bone Shard for agility. I believe it was Monstrous Tooth for rings and Claws for rings. And then I think the Aether and the other one was for necklaces. I'm not sure if it was random on those or not. I can't quite remember. But yeah, anyway, we're going to get out the range of this camp. He says, I feel like this is going to be a massive climax of disappointment at the end. Well, we're about to find out. I really hope this works. It'll be so cool if it works. Um, but yeah, we're about to find out. So I'm now out of range when I suicide. Hey, think on the positive side. At least this is going to be useful, man. At least it's going to be useful. If you place that camp there, it's still going to be profitable because Ash is under siege. Eddie's going to love him forever. I hope this works. Here's the other one. This is the other one. So I showed you Daedric Embers. Daedric Shackles was the other one that used to drop from IC. Um... So those are the ones you used to get for IC and White Gold Tower to determine those days. I can't wait to use this Mercery Camp. I literally made this video on sort of a spur of the moment. I honestly cannot wait to see how the Mercery Camp works. That is going to be so fun. 
here we go. So Bloody Claw was for Agility Necklace. Teeth was for Agility Rings. And then I believe it was the... Um, oh, God. Aoife was the Necklace for Willpower. And then the other one was for the uh, Rings. And obviously the Rings held the bigger price because you need two of them, right? Here we go. Moment of suit. Moment of truth. I'm going to suicide. I hope this works. I really hope this works. It'll feel like such a letdown if it doesn't. I promise you it used to work like this. Some of the old school is where we had to confirm it. How you could see it in some of my old videos. But moment of truth. Here we go. Is this going to let me spawn at the old style camp? Please work. I know this sounds really petty. But it'll be so exciting for me if this works. Even before you can't even place it. It's up. Rest in peace. Fuck this game. Okay. I take it back. We can't spawn at the camp. Damn it. Oh, so disappointing. Okay. Well, it was a huge ball of disappointment. They used to work, so they had an infinite radius. It looks like that's changed. That sucks, dude. That really, really sucks. Oh, well, right. Let's go on to the stuff that I know you can definitely use something. Thank you so much to Tommy Psycho for being willing to spam one of those tanks to show how it actually works. At least you know there's no point in using them anymore. So just keep those ones separate, maybe. I'm going to log on to my Nightblade, finally. I'm going to use the four remaining items. I have one bonus item still to show. That item is worth over 10 mil. So you got that one to look forward to as well. But on my Nightblade, we are now going to use the rare ones. These, I would be almost certain, are going to work the contracts. And I really doubt that anybody has used these in years. This stuff is really expensive. It's super rare. There's barely any in the game. How even sourcing this stuff took me months. So to actually have the chance to finally use these is really exciting for me. The other two that we're going to use, I'm probably going to use them first because it's less exciting, are JD and Liar. So the Liar I actually bought from a guild store. Um, JD, I was given by Geordie816, one of the friends of the stream. And he basically said it will help us out with the video. So that's brilliant of him. And we're going to see what this actually makes. As far as I know, one of these makes physical or weapon damage and the other one makes bash. How they used to work was they used to be quite overpowered when they were first released, as far as I'm informed. They used to do a bit too much in the same version of another glyph. So they basically got removed from the game, and, well, they've never really done anything since. I don't know whether these are going to make anything, whether they're going to get rid of the question mark on the tray, or whether they're actually going to make the item. We're about to find out, I guess. So as soon as I'm logged in, I'm going to go over to an enchanting station. I'm going to make this. And naturally, we're going to make it with gold cooter. Because why not, right? We're going to make a cool glyph. We're going to make it V16. Golden. Just in case it actually makes something pretty cool. But I don't think it's going to make something cool. Either way, it's still cool. Now, there's a lot of other stuff that is discontinued, of course. You've got a lot of tradable set items that are long gone. Um, but there's very few items these days that you can still... What on earth is going on? That you can still actually use. It's those ones that interest me the most. Because if you can use them... Especially the mercenary contracts. It, it would be pretty sick. Let's be real here. I'm really disappointed about that camp stuff. I'm really disappointed about that. Alright, so let's make our way over to the enchanting station. We're going to go in. And here we go. So we go over to the enchanting station. We're going to set a Kuta. A Rapora. And then the first one is going to be... This cost me the grand total of 100k. Cheapest of the lot. Liars. So this has an unknown effect currently. There are very few of these in the game, and it does the following. Lire. See, at least we know the pronunciation. It's not lie, it's Lire. Truly superb glyph of physical harm. Wow. Okay. And let's see how this one's pronounced. This is the JD. Again, this no longer exists. Jedi. Huda. And this one makes a truly superb glyph of bashing. Are they any different to the normal? No, what a pile of baloney. They are literally the same. Well, there goes 300k. All right, let's send these over to Jordy. I promise that he could have these glyphs. He can have the other one as well. I'm not bothered. So that was a huge disappointment, if nothing else. There you go, Jordy. Enjoy your glyphs. I'm going to go in finally with the ones that I do think are going to work. I think I'm going to use these outside of a fight because certainly they used to be really broken. I'm in a full PvE build as well, so I'm not going to last. Let's just see how this goes. I hope there's no Q. There's no Q. All right. We're going to go to Vivek here. And I'm going to use this stuff. I hope these still work. I'll be so disappointed if these don't work. Because I spent bloody 150k on one of these. No, 200k on one of these. And 100k 
Well, no, I didn't spend anything on the other one. The other one I got for really cheap in a guild store long ago. But hey, who knows? This is my PvE build. I'm not going to go into any serious fight with this stuff. Um, what would be fantastic is if we could actually get an enemy to meet me, maybe? I don't know. I think someone's going to try ruin that. Let's just go and see this stuff. Let's go port over to a keep. I'm not on a PvP build again, so I will die in this build if I get in any real fight. But I'm going to go over to Elswell and I'm going to use this stuff. So what these two contracts used to do, the Mage and the Brigand, is they used to summon NPCs that would basically help you in a fight. I almost want to relog to my DK to do this. I, I really don't want to waste them. It would suck so much if I use them and they just die. Guys, I'm going to put these on my Madge DK so that I'm in a PvP build. So that when I use them, we can actually see them fight. Hopefully. I, I really hope they still work because the camp didn't. But these used to summon NPCs for you. And it used to be loads of them. And they were brutally overpowered. They've since been nerfed to oblivion by being removed from the game. But I have them. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm going to read to my magic key for this. I really don't want to waste them. I'd be such a huge disappointment if I used these and it failed miserably. Go on to Templar and see if you can heal them. It's fine. My magic key's got off heals anyway. So we'll go via that way and see how this goes. A quick relog. My DK is DC, so I can use these. And then moment of truth. Let's see from my chat. Chat. Do you think that these are still going to work? Do you think that these are actually still going to summon the NPCs? Or is it just going to do nothing? I'm absolutely terrified to see whether this works. I really hope this works. I'll be so disappointed if they don't summon. I will be so disappointed. I hope this works. It's going to be a disaster if this doesn't do anything. Please work. Pretty mixed opinions from my chat. Alright, we're going in. We're logging on to the Madge Decay. This is Taurus build. For anybody wondering, check it out on the YouTube, etc. Please, 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 please work. We didn't crash. That's a good start. Someone says error 101. I have no idea what that does. I'm hoping yes, but expecting no. I hope this works. I really hope this works. If this works, we're going to have to try find a fight with the second one, maybe. I mean, these were so strong. I remember in the very early days, I think they got moved in like patch 1.2 or 1.4 or something. In the early days, when someone summoned these, it was just pointless. It was so massively overpowered. If somebody used this, it would just end the fight. It was literally game over for whoever's fighting. And I don't know, maybe that was based on sort of the experience of players at the time. But, like, at the same time. Yeah. Moment of truth. Here we go, chat. Oh, please work. Don't disappoint me, game. I'm probably going to have to edit this all down into a, a more original format, I guess. Damn. That way I can tidy it up a bit. We're going to make our way in. Here we go. We're going to pour. Oh, please, please, please don't fail. Covenant Brigand and Covenant Mage Mercenary. This contract gives you the services of a mercenary who will defend the location of a, your choice for a short period of time. I don't even remember how this works. I might even have to use this inside a keep. I truly don't know. Oh, please don't fail. Right. We're going to go find some enemies. How do I not have any armor on? The hell? Ah, oh, it's in the bank. I'm going to get the armor first. I don't want to do this without gear. If we die for these contracts... Honestly, getting a second version of these contracts is probably close to impossible for the Brigand. And the Mercy, I'm going to get ripped off for the person who owns a few. You used to hire these for AP. Exactly. So basically, you'd spend AP on the contract, and then you could summon the dudes, and they would wreck. You are, Professor. Yes. Um, here we go, guys. I'm going to grab my gear. It should still be in the bank, so we're all right on that. Thank God. Impregnable. Heavy body. And um, what was the other piece we're missing? Light sash. That's our impreg. Moment of truth incoming. Please work. Take like a lumber mill or something and put the mercenary by the door. Is that how it works? 
I honestly don't remember how the summon worked. It was so long ago. I mean, if I was going to place it on a resource, we might as well just place it on a farm here. I believe they were only usable in defenses. I'm almost certain about that. So I think the best place for me would be to try and get... Oh, nice. There's a fight on the farm right now. This is perfect. I think I have to quick slot them. I do have to quick slot them. Okay. Here we go, boys. This might be the only time this will ever happen on YouTube. We've got an enemy coming in hot. Go. No. Oh, it does. Oh, I wonder if I can place it off a resource. It does place. Wait, it does. You see that AOE? Can I place it anywhere? Okay, it has to be on a defense. Oh, I need an enemy. It does work, guys. It does work. You see that AOE? It's going to place it. Pog champs in the chat. Now all I need is an enemy. All I need is an enemy to come here. Powder's not going to make it, unfortunately. He was trying to come to help the stream, but he's getting slaughtered by a huge leg. Oh, man. Where can I get a fight? I think my best bet really is going to be to take a resource and just pray. I honestly don't... Oh, man. It's going to be so hard to get through this. I can't believe this works. Do us a favor, mate. It's not going to happen. Come on, man. I'm making a video here. Don't make me kill you. There you go. Live 1BX on the way. Well, you would if this guy apparently didn't take any... No damage. I think it's that Templar. How are all these guys able to perma block on a resto staff? Okay, well that's ended. Good. All right, let's make our way over to Chowman real fast. I'm gonna take one of the resources, and then I'm gonna pray to every god that this works. Use your friend in the campaign of short. Tommy, are you still in the stream? Because that might be a better way of doing this. I said they work. I've got like 20 left from the OG game. Well, we're about to find out what it does. I don't know whether they're still overpowered or anything. I'd also wonder if they work in the towns. That'd be pretty cool to test. Maybe I should do that with, like, the second contract. See if they work in the town. I think that'll be better. Can you... I'm going to change campaign over to short, just so we don't, like, get stream sniped as much or anything like that. It's going to make it a little better to do, because I can meet Tommy over here that way, and he can actually test whether this works. It's fine. Jordy, I'm going to change campaign. If you have a non-DC character, the best place to be would be on shore. Um... I'm going to go over to a resource on shore and try place this. What I'll do, guys, is I'll take all the clips of this and I'll edit it down into a more readable format, basically. <laughs> Big talent. Such a pretty face. That massive orc face. It's fine, because I can extract these clips from Twitch and we can edit them. I honestly pray that this works, Court. Cool. I hope that this can be placed. It had the AoE. It should work. I will meet you guys at Glade Miss Farm, alright? Just try and make you... Oh, your bloody keep is under siege. Really? Hopefully DC loses nickel. If anybody can make their way to Glade Miss Farm, we'll see if this stuff actually works. I really hope this works. It looks so hopeful. Jordy, your best bet... Potentially come on an EP. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what. Instead of Glade Mist, I'll meet you at Ellswell Farm. Because that way an EP can make it just as fast. And we could try it on anyone. I want to see what the attack looks like. Whether it even registers. I mean, it's not in the game anymore. So if you summon it, is it even going to be visible? God knows. For those wondering what these items were. So these are old contracts that used to be got. Um, I'll probably do another little explanation for the video's sake. So... For those wondering about these contracts, this is the Brigham Mercery contract and the Mage Mercery contract. So what these used to be is you used to buy them for AP and you could summon them. And they summoned a super overpowered NPC that would basically fight for you on a defensive position. This stuff was a really, really cool concept. It was just heavily overpowered. And so they basically nerfed the way that it works. 
As far as we know, it still works. It seems that they're able to be placed. They were really, really overpowered. Super, super overpowered, and that's why they got removed. They can be placed. As you can see, if I press Q, I can get the load in. It's like the size of an oil, and I would just have to left click to stop. I'm not going to do that yet, though. I want to wait for an enemy. Can you still buy them? No. So these are impossible to get anymore. The only way you could get these is to source them from a guild trader, potentially, if you're really lucky. Or from a player who hasn't listed them in a guild store, but still actually has them originally. Go to Charmin Lumber and put the Mercery by the Keep Door and heal. He will never die. Well, I'll just place them on the farm. I've got two people coming to visit me on this resource. And then we're going to place this stuff down and see if it actually fights back. We'll see if we can heal it, etc. Because my quarter eye should hopefully heal it. I also want to see whether it can damage, what sort of effect it has, whether it can negate, whether it's invisible. I, I honestly don't know. This stuff could genuinely be completely invisible when I place it. I have no idea whether it's going to be visible because, well, like I said, it does not exist. You know, this is not in the game anymore. The fact that it can still be placed is crazy because this stuff is over four years old now. This has not been in the game for over four years. Here we go. Here's our visitor. All right, Jordy, are you ready? Here it comes. Oh, it's so cool. Is that it? 40k health. Okay, it's got a bleed attack. What the hell's he doing now? He's got a stun. He sucks. Why is the brigand so bad? Oh, my word. All right. Well, that was an embarrassment. The brigand sucked. We're going to try the mage now. Mage has a bit more health. Please have negate. He's got a streak with an AoE. Come on, negate him. Please negate. He just light attacks. What was that about, mage? Come on, you're better than this. I spent 300k on you. You better do something exciting it. That's it. These were overpowered as hell back in the day. This shows what champion points have done to the game, boys. This shows what champion points have done. They don't even negate. They only light tech. Back in the day, this stuff was crazy. I think my chat making a good suggestion here. They're saying that maybe it scales with the old scaling. So it's like a long, long time ago when everybody had far lower stats, far lower damage. You used to have 3k magicka and 3k stamina and 3k health would be big resources. Now it's obviously 40k and things. So I am wondering and assuming... Wait, no way. I think my, I think they're proccing my Scoria. Johnny, don't kill them a sec. I think the Brig of Mercery is proccing my Scoria. I think basically what's happening... The fuck? Uh, did he just crash? Oh no, he's still here. I think they're proccing my square. I don't know if that was my volatile. Um, but I think what's happening with these NPCs is back in the day, they used to be scaled with pre-soft uh, pre caps. So a long time ago, you'd have soft caps on your stats, which meant you were capped at like 2k spell damage, 3k magic and things. It was very, very low stats and stuff. I think it's things like that because you were 2k health back then, exactly. And these things right now are hitting... They're hitting like 1k, 2k... So I think that basically these are on the old damage scaling still, which is a disappointment. But it's still a really, really cool thing to show on stream, I think. Like, look how cool it looks. The mage looks really awesome. They're not proccing score. I must have cast Volatile or something. For those wondering what it looks like, that's the brigand. It's got sort of like a zombie feel to its face, to be honest. I think it's a mask. And then that one there is the mage. I have to say, it was a tremendous disappointment in damage, but it was still pretty cool to show. He says he can see the boss markers. So they're counted as bosses by a player, essentially. He says that they're actually marked as bosses. That's so weird. Is the resource fully leveled? It might be the mage doesn't negate because of that. Um, true, the resource is only level 2. I can't level up any quicker than this, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't think it is that. They're going down, boys. The days are numbered. Go on, mage! 
Oh, wait, that 80 must be from the stream. Damn, he just came to watch, and these guys slaughter him. That's so mean. It's still pretty cool, but I think the negate... I, I don't remember these negating. I'm sure they were only flat damage. It's still a really, really, really cool concept. I'm glad I spent that money. That was worth the 300k, to be honest. The final thing I've got to show you, if the EP wants to slaughter me... Actually, it'd be interesting. Can the EP guys kill me? I want to see if it kills the guard. I wonder if the guard will die if I die. Moment of truth, basically. Nice. So the guard stays alive. So I guess back in the day, you could have summoned multiple of these things. Because we already summoned two. And you could just create a huge army of these, right? It even runs back to the resource. Look. It gets the aggro. It doesn't even despawn. Wait, don't kill it, guys. Don't kill it. I want to see if I can ride back and see it still. It looks like it genuinely doesn't disappear. I think it's going to stay on the resource. It de from the resource because they leave the range. Or maybe it's because I die. I don't know. No way. Apparently it's full health again. No way. Wait, let's go see. This thing might be there until it dies. Look, it's still there. And it's full health again. I see my bloody guard's gone, though. Bastards killed him. Oh, that's awesome. That was worth the money, to be honest. I just get a death tick off myself. Imagine that. You could summon hundreds and hundreds of these, man. You could just get a zerg of these things. Get, like, 30 contracts and just place them all down. Send in the troops. That's so cool. It does do AoE damage. It just is a bit disappointingly. Have you guys got anything else you want to test with the Mage Guard? I don't know if there's anything else we could test for this thing. I'm so glad I got that. That was worth the money. That's really cool. No, it doesn't seem like I can heal it. That is so cool. I will definitely upload all of those clips on YouTube. Of course, it's going to die in seconds, definitely. I can't heal it, but it's still pretty cool. Ah, it's fine. Alright, so the final thing I'm going to show you when we leave our poor innocent mage to do his thing. Don't kill it, guys. Let him stay here. Let the mage live. Spare him. And uh, that way, somebody can experience the mage from another plane. Somebody who comes to this campaign, someday will get to fight it. Alright, he wants to see how far it will chase. Alright, let's see how far the mage will go. Hang on, that's quite a cool test. Like, maybe it won't de-aggro the whole way. Maybe you can actually take it walking. Because it might be it only de-aggroed because I died, potentially. I don't know how far this thing will run. Soon find out, I guess. It's still going. Hang on. <laughs> I wonder how far it's going to go. Or, okay, so de-aggro is based on range. Sad. It would have been so cool if that could have followed. Damn it, man. I'm so glad I spent that money. That was worth trying. Can you control it with Y? No, I can't control it as a pet. It really is.